Hi guys, welcome to my affordable watch collection. My name is Aviv and today we are going to take a look at one of the best value beta watches out there, the Casio MRW200H. We will first go through all the specs and measurements and then, since it's practically a field watch, we will also see how it stacks up against my list of seven attributes a field watch should have. I found a great deal on this watch on eBay a few months ago and I just had to have it. I already said before that Casio is one of my favorite affordable watch brands. They have such an enormous selection of quality watches that won't break the bank and will last you a lifetime. And this one is definitely one of my favorite Casios and maybe even one of my favorite watches in my entire collection. It is a quartz operated field watch slash diver with day and date display and you can find it in a few different colorways and dial layouts. I link some of them in the description below. Ok, let's take a closer look at the watch. Let's first get the measurements so we know what we are looking at here. The width of the case is 43 mm, its thickness 11.7 mm, the distance between the lugs is 18 mm, but the strap itself is wider than that. It is 24 mm at its widest point and it tapers down to 17.5 mm. Lug tip to lug tip is 47.5 and the watch weighs only 39 grams. I was actually very surprised when I first measured this watch because it really doesn't feel as big as the measurements would suggest. The dial is made black and everything on it is printed in white. There's a lot going on here so we'll go from the outside in. There's a chapter ring with a printed mini track. After that we have a classic 24 hours field watch dial layout. 1 to 12 Arabic numerals hour indicators that are in fact loomed and after that 13 to 24. You'll notice that where the 3 and 15 are supposed to be we have a day date window surrounded by a printed white frame. The day of the week and the day of the month are printed in black on white wheels. Under the 12 o'clock or 24 marker we have the Casio logo and quartz and above the 6 or 18 o'clock position it says water resist 100 meters which is pretty great for any watch at this price point. The diver style hands are painted with a glossy white paint and are loom filled. We have a chunky hours hand, a pencil minutes hand and a needle seconds hand with a loomed arrow tip. The loom is actually not bad for the price you pay for this watch and I love the way the number indicators pop when they are loomed. Obviously it's not perfect and it won't last forever but it does look very nice and it will allow you to tell the time very easily. The bezel is plastic, it rotates bi-directionally and doesn't ratchet, nothing is holding it in place after you rotate it, so if you were planning on using it to time your dives, keep that in mind. It is a tight fit though, it doesn't just rotate freely like my Vostok Komandirsky, there is some friction keeping it in place. It has stamped minute markers filled with white paint every 5 minutes with 15, 30 and 45 larger than all the rest. There's a minute track for the first 15 minutes and a red vintage diver style downwards facing triangle at the 12 o'clock position. The bezel has a kind of a cogwheel design to it and it bulges out on each quarter to allow you to get a better grip. If you are not familiar with the way a dive time bezel works, let's quickly go over that. The way it works is pretty simple. You can either align the triangle with the minute hand 
and as it moves you can track the elapsed time or you can locate the triangle ahead of the minute's hand to use it as a timer. Let's say you are making hard boiled eggs and you want to know when 15 minutes have passed so you can take it off the stove. Just position the triangle 15 minutes ahead of the minute's hand and wait until the hand reaches the triangle. The crystal is a flat piece of mineral glass. It is already starting to gather scuffs and scratches. And that is the biggest disadvantage mineral crystals have. When they get scratched, and they will eventually, there's nothing you can do about it. The case is made of black plastic and it has a matte finish to it. Pretty simple. The lugs are hooded and the crown at the 3 o'clock is protected halfway by crown guards. This is a non-signed pull crown with two operating positions. Pull it to the first position and turn it up to set the day of the week. And you can choose between English and French and rotate down to set the day of the month. When you pull the crown to the second position, the movement hacks and you can set the time. The case back is made of stainless steel and it is connected to the case with four screws. It has the Casio logo engraved on top and underneath that the module and model reference numbers. Stainless steel back, water resistance 10 bar, that's 100 meters, Japan movement and cased in China. The movement inside is a Casio caliber 5125, which is actually a Miyota 2305, a day-date quartz movement with a stated accuracy of plus minus 20 seconds per month. The strap is very basic black resin strap, like you can find on many different Casios, with a resin keeper and a plastic buckle, which is signed with the Casio logo, a nice touch at this price point. It's nothing fancy, but it does get the job done, and it is rather comfortable. Let's put the watch on my 7-inch wrist and see how it wears. The first thing I notice when I get this watch on my wrist is how comfortable it is. It is very lightweight, the strap feels comfortable most of the time, but like any other resin strap, it can get pretty sweaty on warmer days. The second thing I notice is that it doesn't wear as large as the measurements suggest. I was genuinely surprised when I measured the case and saw it was 43 mm in diameter. It really does feel smaller than that. Maybe it's the weight, maybe it's the rather thin case, or the short lug to lug. Maybe it's the fact that the dial itself is quite small compared to the entire watch, I can't put my finger on it, but it just wears smaller than it's supposed to. Now let's quickly see how the Casio MRW200H stacks up against my list of 7 things a field watch should have, according to my own experience as an infantry soldier. Ok, so first, a field watch has to be legible, and here the legibility is great. The white hands and markings on the dial contrast very well against the black dial and it's easy to read the time even in darker environments. Second, a field watch has to be durable and well, this is not the most durable watch. It has a plastic case and a mineral crystal, both with the tendency to scratch and scuff and it lacks the shock resistance you would find on a G-Shock. The third thing is that the field watch has to be reliable and I think this one is pretty reliable. It comes from a good home and has a reliable Casio slash Miyota movement. Next thing on the list is the ease of operation. Yes, this watch is pretty easy to operate. Number five is water resistance and this watch is water resistant to a depth of 100 meters which is more than enough. Next, a field watch has to be comfortable. And like I said, this is a comfortable watch to wear. Last thing is coolness. The watch has to be cool, 
and have at least one cool feature. And while this is quite a cool watch, I can't point at a specifically cool feature that makes it stand out. If you want to learn more about this list, you can watch the video I made where I explain and demonstrate each point. I leave a link to that in the description of this video and in the top corner of your screen. So there you go. Not the best field watch in the world, but also not the worst. I wouldn't necessarily take it deep sea diving either, but it is perfect for swimming and for all wet everyday activities. I do know of some soldiers who use this watch as their service watch, but it could also be a great watch to give your kids when you don't want to give them something expensive that might get completely destroyed, but is also reliable and fun. All in all, it's a pretty awesome beater watch, an everyday watch, something sporty and low key, very affordable and great value for money. Its shortcomings are completely acceptable for the price, mainly the durability of the plastic case and the mineral glass. To list a couple more, we have the non-ratcheting bidirectional bezel and the day and date wheels that it would be nicer if they were black to match the dial. So if you want to own one of these watches, I will put links in the description of this video for a few color options on Amazon and eBay. Note that these are affiliate links. They will not cost you any extra money, but will go a long way in helping this channel keep going. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment below and subscribe to my channel. This is the quickest and easiest way you can support the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, get to know me and my collection a little bit better, get all the news about the channel and connect with me on a more personal level. And hey, if you're already here, here is a quick link to my field watches video and to another one that might interest you. I want to thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time.